before anything else let me show you the guesstimate ebook which has 35 plus guesstimate interview question from different industries please find the link in the description box or from the pinned comment to get this ebook i am here with another guesstimate interview question and the question is to estimate the electricity consumption we have a complete playlist of guesstimate videos so you can watch the video and prepare for your next upcoming interviews this is also a standard question and the difficulty level of this question is easy to moderate i hope you all will be able to solve this question on your own so pause the video and give it a try and always try to reach the final answer so with that said let's get started as usual i am giving you 5 second to think about the question and have some initial approach ready so your time starts now i hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question so let's see how we can go about this first let's start with the clarifying question the first question which we can ask is whether we need to give the answer in terms of number of unit consumed or cost of the electricity consumed this will determine what is the final form of our answer let's assume that we are thinking about number of units of electricity consumed right the second question which we can ask is about the consumption are we considering the units of electricity consumed by commercial or residential entity let's assume that we are thinking about the unit of electricity consumed by residential entities the third question which we can ask is about the geography like a city or entire india or at a global level are we considering the consumption of electricity units let's assume that we are thinking about the electricity consumption in india the fourth question which we can ask is about the time frame what is the time frame we are considering for electricity consumption let's assume that we are thinking about the monthly unit consumption in india the final question which we can ask is about the type of electricity if we have to do anything bifurcation between the green energy or some sort something of that sort right so but let's assume that we are not going to bifurcate we are not going into that direction so we are only thinking about the normal electricity consumption i think we have asked considerable set of questions to understand the problem in a better way if you think we could have asked more questions please let me know in the comment section so that we all can learn and apply the same in the next interview so now it is time to form the goal of the problem the goal of the problem is to estimate the monthly units consumption of electricity in india since we have to calculate the monthly consumption of electricity we'll start with the indian population we will bifurcate the indian population into urban population and rural population from there we will get urban household and rural household because the consumption of the unit will happen at the household level right that is where we have gone ahead and get the urban household and the rural household after getting household we need to bifurcate them into upper class middle class and rural class because the electricity consumption would be very different among these three class right after that we would get the unit of consumed monthly by different classes of the people across urban and the rural household we will sum it up and get the total unit of electricity consumed in india in one month that is the high level equation and how we are thinking about solving the problem and get the estimate i hope that you understand the high level approach and it's time to put those number indian population is around 1.4 billion where urban population contribute roughly around 30% and rural population contribute roughly around 70% that will give you 400 million people in urban areas and 1000 million people in the rural area these are rough number we'll assume four people to be the average household size in the urban area that will give you around 100 million household urban household and five people to be the average household size in the rural area that will give you around 200 million rural household now we have got the number of urban household and the rural household in the urban area let's assume that 10% belong to the high income household 40% belong to mid income household and the rest 50% belong to the low income household on the other hand in the rural area let's assume that 5% belong to the high income household 25% belong to mid income household and rest 75% belong to the lower income household this will give you 10 million urban high income household 30 million urban mid income household and 60 million urban low income household whereas 10 million high income rural household 50 million mid income rural household and 140 million low income rural household now let's assume that on an average a high income urban household will consume around 2000 unit per month mid income urban household will consume around 1000 unit per month and 80% of the low income rural household has the access to electricity which will consume around 500 per month here we have taken the 80% factor similarly for rural area let's assume that high income household will consume around 1000 units per month mid income people will consume around 500 units per month and only 50% in the low income in the rural areas 
have access to electricity that will consume around 200 per month adding all of it you will get around 123 billion units of electricity consumed in one month i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section and please download the ebook it will help you a lot till then keep learning and keep watching hi everyone welcome back to our channel this video is part of our guesstimate series if you haven't checked out other questions please check it out Today's question is to estimate the revenue of petrol pump. Yes, you heard it right. This is also a standard question and the difficulty level of this question is easy to moderate. I hope you all will be able to solve this question on your own. So pause the video and give it a try and always try to reach the final answer. Also, have you checked out our latest guesstimate ebook containing trending guesstimate questions from different industry? The ebook you can find in the pin comment or from the description box. So you can go there and download it. With that said, let's get started. Also, as usual, I am giving you 5 seconds to think about the question and have some initial approach ready. So your time starts now. I hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question. So let's see how we can go about this. First, let's start with the clarifying question. The first question which we can ask is about the revenue. What are the different sources of revenue being attributed here? Because there can be multiple sources of revenue for a petrol pump. If you have seen the Shell petrol pump, apart from the fuel station, they also provide services for food and beverages, servicing, engine oiling, etc. Also, they have billboard which constitute the advertising revenue. So let's assume that we are thinking about all kind of revenue, but we are not thinking about the advertising revenue, right? The second question which we can ask is about the petrol pump, like where is it located? How big is it? Why it is an important question? Because if the petrol pump is big, it can serve a large number of concurrent customer, right? Also, there will be many filling station in the petrol pump. Let's assume that there are six filling station at the petrol pump. That means six users can concurrently fill their vehicle with their fuel. But here I am not assuming any lane dedicated to a particular type of vehicle. So the petrol pump is located in a busy area in a metro city and have six fuel station in petrol pump. The third question which we can ask is about the vehicle. What kind of vehicle are included in this? Let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint. So any type of vehicle except the heavy vehicles like truck and buses are included in this. The fourth question which we can ask is about the type of the fuel like CNG, petrol, diesel. So let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint. Finally, what is the time frame of the revenue calculation? Let's assume that we are thinking about the daily average revenue that to on weekends. I think we have asked a good set of questions. If you think we could have drilled down more, please let me know in the comment section so that we all can learn and apply the same in the next interview. So the goal of the problem is to estimate the daily revenue of a petrol pump located in a busy area. And we need to think about the all type of revenue excluding the advertising revenue. Now let's start with high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. Since we have to calculate the daily revenue from a petrol pump, we will start with 24 hours in a day. We will bifurcate those 24 hours into peak hour, non-peak hour and negligible hour. I hope you are able to understand by the name what does it mean by peak hour. Then we will try to calculate the total number of visited in the peak hour, non-peak hour and negligible hour. Adding all of them, we would have the total number of vehicles visiting a petrol pump in a day of this much size. Now we have got the total number of vehicle, but not all the vehicle would be two wheeler or four wheeler, right? So what we will do is to get the revenue from two or three wheeler, then we'll get the revenue from four wheeler. And finally, some of the users will also spend money on food and beverages or other ancillary services. So we'll get the revenue from that as well. So finally, we will add it up and get the total estimated revenue of a petrol pump. Now, before putting numbers, let me explain you one concept which will help you to visualize things in a better way. So here, if you can see in the peak hour, there is so much of rush. People are standing in a queue for fuel, but there would be minimum time for serving the customer, including filling the fuel and taking the payment, right? So let's assume that this is the four minutes. So this is our supply side constraint. That means minimum to minimum, it will take at least four minutes to serve a customer. Now in the peak hour, where the, there is a queue, we have infinite demand, right? We can assume to be infinite demand because we can't fulfill the demand for everyone. So how many vehicles we will be able to serve in that one hour, right? It will be 60 divided by 4. That means 15 vehicles we can serve, right? In the second case, when the queue is not there, but vehicles are coming in an interval of, let's say, 10 minutes. In that case, how much vehicle we will be able to serve in 60 minutes? 
that will be 60 divided by 10 because the demand is not seemingly infinite for us, right? So similar concept we will be applying in this question. So let's start putting those numbers. There are 24 hours in a day and I'm dividing 24 hours in an equal proportion of peak hour, non-peak hour and negligible hour. Negligible hour may be from midnight 12 to morning 8. Similarly, there are 8 hours of peak demand and rest 8 hours of non-peak demand. Now we need to estimate the number of vehicle in the peak demand, right? Let's assume that we have a lot of demand, seemingly infinite demand, but from the supply side, we have a constraint of four minutes. We would take at least four minutes to serve the customer. So how many customer we would be able to serve? That will be eight multiplied by 60 divided by four multiplied by six. That is 720 vehicle. We would be able to serve in the peak demand. Why we have multiplied by six? Because we have six filling station, which can be used concurrently to fill the fuel in the vehicle. Now we need to estimate the number of vehicle in the non-peak demand. Here we are assuming that the vehicle is coming in 10 minutes. So that means the number of vehicle will be 8 multiplied by 60 divided by 10 multiplied by 6 and multiplied by 0 0.8. Here we are also assuming 80% of utilization of the filling station that will give you around 230 vehicles. Similarly, we will be calculating the number of vehicle in the negligible hour. Here we are assuming 20 minute time interval between the vehicle and 50% capacity utilization. That will give you around 72 more vehicle. Adding all of it, we are thinking about 1020 vehicle, right? Now we have to calculate revenue from uh, two or three wheeler, four wheeler and from the ancillary services. Before going into that answer, reminding you to check out our guesstimate ebook to practice more guesstimate questions. So back to the question. So let's try to estimate the revenue from the two or three wheelers. I am assuming that out of those 1020 vehicles which are coming in a day, 70% belong to this category. But how would you calculate the revenue contributed by this two or three vehicles? That is 1020 multiplied by 0 0.7 multiplied by 300. Here 300 is the average order value or average money spent by a vehicle. Because some of them will be spending around 500 to 800 in two wheelers and some may be spending around 100 to 150. Right. Here we could have done one more step like uh, bifurcating between diesel, petrol, CNG kind of thing. But I am not doing that. For the sake of simplicity, I am skipping that step and assuming directly the average amount spent on a vehicle. Hope you are with me till now. This will give you around 2,14,200 rupees. Coming to four wheelers, the revenue will be 1,020 and rest 30% of the vehicle are four wheelers. Multiply by 1,000. Here we have taken 0.3 because 70% are already two or three wheelers and rest 30% are four wheelers. And on average, the ticket size will be around 1,000 rupees. So this will give you around 3 lakh 6,000 rupees. Now next we have to calculate the revenue from the ancillary services. So let's assume that the 10% of the total number of vehicle will opt for the ancillary services. A lot of people ask me about how are we taking this 10%. So these are very sensitive numbers based on the observation of very small sample. And I kind of extrapolate these observation to a larger set. Similar reasoning you can give to your interviewer as well. Although interviewer is never interested in these kind of numbers until and unless the numbers are way off. They are more focused on the approach. So calculating the revenue from the ancillary services. Since we have Assume 10%, so that will be 1020 multiplied by 0 0.1 multiplied by 200. Assuming that 200 would be the average order value, this will give you around 20,400 rupees. Adding all of it will give you around total revenue of 5.4 lakh rupees. I hope you all have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment section. Also, please download the guesstimate ebook from the link in the description box. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video is part of our guesstimate series. If you haven't checked out other questions, please check it out. Today's question is to estimate the revenue of PBR cinema. Right. This is a standard question and the difficulty level of this question is easy to moderate. I hope you all will be able to solve this question on your own. So pause the video and give it a try and always try to reach the final answer. Also never skip the video, watch complete to the end because in general several things I do the voiceover only and you will not be able to find this in the PPT. So it is very important that you understand each and every assumption and reasoning behind everything, right? So with that said, let's get started. As usual, I am giving you five seconds to think about the question and have some initial approach ready. Your time starts now. I hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question. So let's see how we can go about this. First, let's start with the clarifying question. The very first question which we can ask is about the PVR cinema itself. 
those who don't know about what it is, let me explain very briefly. PVR Cinema is an Indian multiplex chain where you can go and watch movies, right? So the question which we can ask is about the PVR Cinema, like does it include all the multiplex in the chain or a single multiplex? Because the revenue in both the cases will be different. So let's assume that we are thinking about the single multiplex. Since we have to calculate the revenue of single multiplex, it is important to clarify the understanding of the multiplex like where it is located. Why am I asking this question is because if it is located in a busy area, then the occupancy would be high. But if it is located in a non-busy area, then people may not choose to come to this multiplex and the occupancy may be lower. So let's assume that this is located in a metro city in a busy area. Also, we are assuming that it is not in the mall. So in that case, we need to consider the revenue from the valet parking as well. The third question which we can ask is about the size of the multiplex. How big is that? Because the size will determine the number of shows and eventually the revenue. So let's assume that multiplex is kind of big and it has total 10 screens. The fourth question which we can ask is about the type of revenue which we need to consider here. Are we only considering the revenue from the primary services or the other ancillary services are also included? Let's assume that we are considering the revenue from all type of services. The fifth question which we can ask is about the time frame. What is the time frame we are considering for the revenue? Let's assume that we are considering about the single day and that too on the weekend like Sunday. I hope you are with me till now. So let's summarize and form the goal of the problem so that you and your interviewer are on the same page. Also, always remember to keep the interview interactive because majority of interviewers have very less attention span. So it is your responsibility to keep it interactive. So the goal of the problem is to estimate the daily revenue of PVR multiplex in a busy area from all type of services. I think we have asked almost all the questions to comprehend the problem in a better way. If you think you, we could have asked more questions, please do comment in the comment section. It will help all of us to learn more. Now let's start with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. But before that, have you checked our latest guesstimate ebook containing trending guesstimate from different industry and the ebook you can find in the pinned comment and from the description box. Back to the question. Since we have to calculate the revenue from a multiplex, we'll start with the timing. Assuming that the movie shows in the PVR multiplex start from 9 in the morning till 12 in the midnight, that is 15 hours of the play. From there, we would be getting the number of movies we can play in the one day in one screen. But we have total 10 screens in the multiplex. We would be able to get the total number of movies that can play on the 10 screen in a day. That is basically total number of movies that can play in a day in PVR. But not all the movie shows are 100% occupied, right? So we would consider the occupancy rate as well. And this will lead us to give the estimated footfall in the PVR multiplex. Till now, we have total number of people that come to watch movies an entire day in PVR multiplex. Since we have to calculate the total revenue in PVR multiplex, we would bifurcate the revenue into revenue from movies, revenue from parking and revenue from food and beverages. We will sum it up and get the total revenue by a PVR multiplex in a day. I hope you are with me till now. If you have any question, please let me know in the comment section and I'll try to resolve your queries. Now it is time to put those numbers. Morning 9 to midnight 12 will give you 15 hours of operations. And one movie show will take approximately 3 hours. So this will give you on an average 5 movie shows from morning 9 to midnight 12 on a single screen. right? So there are 10 screen in the multiplex. The total number of screenplay would be around 15 in that case. Now let's assume that average occupancy would be around 90%. That is the average number because on Sunday as well, some movie shows are 100% occupied, some may be 70% occupied. But on average, I'm assuming that 90% of the average occupancy. This will lead to the total footfall that would be 50 multiplied by 0.9 multiplied by 200. Here 200 is the total number of seat for one screen. This will give you around 9,000 people. Till now, we have found out the total number of people visiting the busy PVR multiplex on Sunday. To get the revenue from the movie ticket, we can directly multiply 9,000 by 300. Here, I have assumed that the average ticket cost around 300 rupees in the PVR. That will give you around 27 lakh rupees from the ticket revenue. Now, to calculate the parking revenue, not everyone would be buying space in the parking, right? And people come into group as well. So let's assume that on an average group size is around 3. Some people would come by 2 wheeler or some people would come by 4 wheeler. So total number of groups would be around 9000 divided by 3. That is around 3000 group. And among those 3000 group, only 50% would opt for parking because some people would come by public transport or maybe by Uber. 
So on an average, the parking charge is around 50 rupees. That will give you 9,000 divided by 3, multiply by 50, multiply by 0.5. I hope you are with me till now. So that is close to 75,000 rupees from parking. Finally, to calculate the revenue from food and beverages, again, we will assume that the people will come in group and they purchase the food and beverages in group only. Here also, average group size will be around 3. But not every group would want the food and beverages, right? So let's assume that only 30% of the total group would be buying the food and they will spend on an average 500 rupees. Since food and beverages in the movie theater is kind of costly, so that will give you around 9000 divided by 3 multiplied by 500 multiplied by 0.3. That is around 4.5 lakhs. Adding all of it will give you around 32 lakh rupees. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have doubt, please do comment in the comment section and also please download the guesstimate ebook from the link in the description box or the comment or from the pinned comment. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will be solving a guesstimate question and the question is to estimate the number of cash counters required at a DMART store. Those who don't know about DMART store, DMART is like a supermarket or hypermarket which is a large self-serving shopping store. So you might have gone several stores like Walmart store, DMART store, Reliance store. They all are basically a supermarket or a hypermarket store. So the question is to estimate the number of cash counters required at a DMART which is a large shopping store. Right. So how do we solve this problem? So as usual, what should be our first step? The first step is to understand the question and ask clarifying questions so that you have a clear understanding of what is being asked in an interview and you don't miss things. So let's think through it. The first question which we can ask is about the place. So which city are we talking about? Is this a metro city or tier 1 city or tier 2 city or something else? So let's assume that we are talking about Bangalore. Then we can ask how many DMART stores do we have currently in Bangalore? Let's assume that we have 10 stores in Bangalore. Why are we asking this question? Because footfall in the stores will get distributed if we have more and more DMART stores in the city, right? The third question which we can ask is about the size anomalies. Basically, the DMART stores are big stores and is there any huge variation in the size of the store? For example, like some stores are too small, some stores are too big. So let's assume that there are no anomalies in the size. All the stores are roughly of the same size. This is the assumption we are taking. The final question which we can ask is about the understanding of cash counters. So in an interview setting, don't assume anything on your own. If you are confident on something, still it is a good practice to clarify with the interviewer so that you and your interviewer are on the same page. Here the cash counters are the billing counters where we have to pay for the bills. Now it is time to create goal of the problem. The goal of the problem is to estimate the number of cash counters or billing counters required at average DMART store in Bangalore. Right, so this is the goal of our problem which we are trying to solve. So how do we think about estimating this problem? I am giving you 5 seconds to think through it. So your time starts now. I am pretty sure that you have something in your mind. So let me ask you a question. If you are able to match the checkout demand in the peak hour, then we are good to go, right? Think through it. Think once again. So if we are able to match the checkout demand in peak hour, we are good to go with all the cash counter requirement, right? So think harder. If you are convinced, you, you can continue the video. If you are not convinced, you can pause the video and think about it once again. And you can also ask me in the comment section. So let's start with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. We will first start with the Bangalore population, right? From there, we can get the number of households. Now the question is, why are we taking the household approach? Because not all the members in the family go for purchase in DMART, right? So it is good proxy to consider household which shop from the supermarket or hypermarket. Now, not all the household will shop from supermarket, right? Majority of household will shop from local shops or some vendors, right? So we have to take the number of households which are shopping from the hypermarket or supermarket, right? Then not all the households which are shopping for supermarket or hypermarket will shop from DMART store because there are a lot of other players as well, like Star Bazaar, there are Reliance Fresh. So we have to take into account the market share of the DMART store. Then we have to estimate that as well. So till now, we have an estimate of number of households that shop from DMART. From here, we have to consider the number of households that shop from DMART every month. After that, since we have assumed that there are 10 DMART stores in Bangalore, we can have an average number of household in Bangalore that shop from one DMART in a month, right? So till now, we have an average number of households in Bangalore that shop from DMART in a month, right? Now we can estimate the footfall. How? 
we can assume that every household on an average two people come to shop there may be single individual from a household coming to demart or there can be be complete family coming to shop right but on an average we are assuming that two people from an household coming to shop from demart that is where we can get the footfall in the demart store so till now we know the average monthly footfall in one store of demart in bangalore from here we can calculate the daily average footfall on weekends more people come to demart so we can take a multiplier factor right so on weekends we can assume that something like 2x twice the number of people who are coming on the daily basis are coming on weekends so there is a 2x multiplier factor we are considering here so till now we have estimated footfall on weekend on a demart from here we can calculate the footfall per hour considering demart store opens for 10 hours similarly we can assume that the footfall in a rush hour with the similar concept of multiplier factor which we have done in the weekend so wait we have a complete calculation so watch till the very end so till now we know the average number of footfall in a demart during rush hour on weekends that is the peak footfall so the number of counters would be designed in a such a way that the peak demand can be fulfilled now we can assume that 40% of the peak footfall do check out in that one hour it's just an assumption so on an average we can assume that check out take 4 minutes so now we know how much time 40% of check out will take right and we have only 60 minutes so here we can calculate the number of counters that is required to support these many checkouts this is the high level equation and walk through of the solution now let's start putting those numbers bangalore population is around 10 million we can assume that the average household size in bangalore is around 3 this gives us 3.3 million household in bangalore right assuming that these 3.3 million household 30% are the ones who shop from any hypermarket or supermarket this will give around 1 million or 10 lakh of household who are potential customer right these are potential customer of demart but since there are lot of other players as well like reliance fresh local market chains etc so assume that 30% of these potential household go to demart so that will give us around 3 lakh of household who shop from the demart now let's assume that 60% of these household shop on the monthly basis that means they visit demart store in a month right so average number of household who go to demart in a month will be around 1.8 lakh households now since we have assumed that 10 demart stores are there in bangalore this will give around 18000 household who shop from one demart now let's assume that every household two people visit the demart store maybe a couple or father or a son etc so from this we would be estimating the number of footfall in a demart store per month this would give around 36000 people per month now from the uh, per month we have to go we have to calculate on the daily basis so we can simply divide by 30 that will give around 1200 footfall per day but on weekend the footfall may increase right so we can assume a multiplier factor of 2 so the average footfall on weekend will be around 2.5k so basically 2500 people are coming to shop from demart on a weekend and demart is operational for 10 hours we have assumed that so per hour on an average 250 people come but there is a rush hour also assuming at peak the footfall is around 1.5 times the normal hour so so this will give around 375 people now assuming 40% of these people do check out this is an assumption so 150 check outs will has to happen in that one hour on average one person takes around 4 minute per check out so total minutes required is around 600 minutes for the entire check out in that one hour but since this has to happen in one hour so there would be around 10 checkouts or counters cash counters and this figure is coming by dividing 600 by 16 here we have taken a lot of assumption always highlight all the assumption which you are taking so this would be the concept of solving this question i hope you have learned something new from this video happy learning hi everyone welcome back to our channel this video is part of our guesstimate series If you haven't checked out other question please check it out also if you want me to cover some particular question please comment below and i'll try to prioritize the question in the future videos also please let me know apart from the guesstimate videos what kind of other questions you want me to cover in the videos i am planning to create videos on product manager interview and consulting interview do let me know your preferences as well with that said let's get started today's question is to estimate the market size of prime video that is amazon prime videos This is also an important question if you are able to solve this question then you will be able to solve any other question related to ott platform like market sizing of netflix market sizing of hotstar etc etc so watch this question very carefully and you will learn a lot
also never skip the video watch till the end because in general several thing i do the voice over only and this will not be presenting in the ppt so it is very important for you to understand the any assumption and the reasoning behind every other thing right so you need to watch the video till the very end as usual i am giving you 5 second to think about the question and have some initial approach ready remember don't jump onto the solution pause the video think about it and watch the video complete to the end your time starts now i hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question so let's start how we can go about this first let's start with the clarifying question the very first question which we can ask is about the market size what does it mean when we are talking about the market size does it mean the total number of users who watch the amazon prime video or number of the paid subscribers or the revenue generated by those users what does exactly mean by the market size let's assume that we are thinking about the revenue generated by amazon prime video since we have to calculate about the revenue the second question we can ask is about the revenue does this revenue only include the subscription revenue or the ad revenue is also included in this let's assume that currently we are only thinking about the subscription based revenue we are not thinking about any ad revenue so in future if you come across the revenue estimation question about ott platform do consider the ad revenue as well but here we are only thinking about the subscription revenue the third question which we can ask is about the time frame in what time frame are we calculating here let's assume that we are going to calculate the subscription revenue of amazon prime video in one year so basically we are thinking about the annual subscription revenue of amazon prime the fourth question which we can ask is about the geography in what geography are we considering are we thinking about the global revenue or some specific geography here we are considering let's assume that we are thinking about the indian geography the fifth question which we can ask is about the subscription because amazon prime has different subscription plan like monthly subscription quarterly subscription or annual subscription let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint now before jumping on to forming the goal of the problem i would like you to know about our guesstimate ebook which you can find on the pinned comment and the description box the ebook contain guesstimate from different industry as you can see on the screen so do check it out now back to the question i think we have asked almost all the question to comprehend the problem in a better way if you think we could have asked more question please do comment in the comment section it will help all of us to learn more so this is the time to form the goal of the problem the goal of the problem is to estimate the market size in terms of subscription revenue of amazon prime in one year in india i hope you are with me till now now let's start with the high level equation and the walk through of the solution we'll start with the indian population then from there we will bifurcate them between the age group i am assuming that people between age of 20 to 60 are the ones who are potential users of amazon prime or any other ott platform but that doesn't mean every user between 20 to 60 watches the prime or netflix that is where we need to take into account the internet penetration till now we got all the people who are between age 20 to 60 and have the active internet connection after that we need to take into account the ott penetration as well because not all the user between age 20 to 60 who have an active internet connection will be watching ott platform right so we need to take into account some fraction of the users who will be watching ott platform after that we need to think about the user who watch prime video because some user might have access to two ott platform like prime video and netflix some users might have access to only single ott platform like netflix only or prime only right so here we are thinking about the user who watch the amazon prime i am not saying that we are watching only amazon prime they may be watching other ott platform as well so till now we got all the users who watch amazon prime video but they may or may not be the paid user right because in india we share the account amazon prime account that is where we need to calculate the paid users of amazon prime video till now we got the paid users of amazon prime video we need to further drill down into their subscription plan what i mean by this is we should further bifurcate them into monthly plan quarterly plan and the annual plan after that sum it up to get the total annual revenue by the paid subscription for amazon prime in a year in india i hope you got the approach and concept to solve the problem it is time to put those number and get the answer but before that let me share you something a lot of you have reached out to me regarding the resume saying that their resume is not getting select and they are facing constant rejections So you need to understand that for a particular job application, thousand of candidates apply, and the recruiter just spends a handful of time, maybe five ten second, to screen through your resume. 
so you need to stand out so i am sharing my resume with you here you will be able to find the editable template and my i am bangalore resume from which you can learn as to how to frame the points putting the link in the description box to check it out now it is time to put those numbers indian population is around 1.4 billion i am assuming that people have an average span of 80 years and they are uniformly distributed between the age group that means that number of people between 0 to 25 will be same as the number of people between 25 to 50 here i have assumed that the potential users of ott platform will be in between 20 to 60 years of age so the number of people between 20 to 60 would be 40 divided by 80 multiplied by 1.4 billion that will give you around 700 million users between age group of 20 to 60 Now for internet penetration I am assuming 60% of the people between age group 20 to 60 have an active internet connection the remaining 40% may belong to rural areas or may belong to low income class so we are left with 420 million users who are between age 20 to 60 and have an active internet connection but not all the people who are between 20 to 60 and have an active internet connection will watch the ott platform like prime video netflix hotstar right so we need to think about the ott penetration as well Let's assume that 50% of those 420 million watches any OTT platform. That will give you around 210 million people. But here, not everyone will watch the Amazon Prime, right? So as we discussed, there are people who watch two, three OTT platform. There are some users who watch only single OTT platform. So let's assume that out of those 210 million people, 40% watch the Amazon Prime. That will give you around 84 million Amazon Prime viewers in India. Now in India we share our account with the other people, so not everyone buys the subscription, right? We watch the video from someone else's account. So let's assume that on an average four viewers are there have an account paid subscription. That will give you around twenty one million paid subscriber in India. But all of these subscriber will not take the annual subscription package, right? Some students are there who don't want to waste their time on OTT platform. They take one month of subscription maybe after an exam. There are certain users who take one month of subscription to watch exclusive sports matches, right? And they do it multiple time in a year. For example, they may be buying one month plan in January and another one month plan in August or September. Now you will be asking me the question that they could have bought a quarter plan. What is the harm in that? It will not help them, right? Because a quarter plan bought in the January month will get exhausted in the March, right? But their requirement is to watch in January and August. In that case, quarterly plan won't work. So let's assume that ten percent of the people buy monthly plan, and let's assume that they buy this monthly plan twice in a year. So the revenue will be three hundred rupees. That is monthly subscription cost multiplied by two multiplied by ten percent. That is two million users. It will give you around one point two billion rupees. Similarly, with the same explanation, let's assume that there are another ten percent of the people who buy quarterly plans and on an average twice in a year. This will give you. Six hundred rupees. That is subscription cost multiplied by two, multiplied by ten percent. That is two million users. This will give you another two point four billion rupees. Finally, let's assume that majority of users buy an annual subscription plan. That is eighty percent of the users, and the cost is around fifteen hundred rupees. That will give you around twenty five point five billion rupees. Adding all of them will give you around twenty nine billion rupees. That is an average annual subscription revenue of Amazon Prime in India, and this is in rupees. So, if you want to convert in dollar, you can change accordingly. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment section. Also, please download the guesstimate ebook from the link in the description box. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. Hi everyone welcome back to our channel in this video we will be solving a guesstimate question and the question is to estimate the number of airplanes in air right now yes at this point of time how many airplanes are flying so let's get started as usual the first step is to understand the question and ask clarifying questions so that you have a clear understanding of what is being asked in an interview and you don't miss things so let's think through it the first question which we can ask is about the time since we are asked to estimate the number of airplanes that are flying in the sky at this point in time then it is very critical to clarify about the time because there can be peak hours or non peak hours as well so what point of time does the interviewer is interested in let's assume that he want us to calculate during the peak hours the second question which we can ask is about the geography are we thinking about the airplanes flying across the globe or above any particular geography let's assume that interviewer want us to calculate airplanes flying over india 
the final question which we can ask is about the categories basically the airplanes which we are trying to calculate are passenger planes or cargo planes or do we have to think about domestic flights or international flights are also included so these are very important questions which we have to clarify before jumping onto the solution so let's assume that the interviewer want us to calculate only domestic passenger flights now that we have quite an idea about the question it is time to form a goal of the problem so the goal of the problem is to estimate the number of domestic passenger flights that are flying at the peak time over india so are you able to get it why we have asked so many clarifying questions it it has given us the sense of understanding what is being asked in an interview question so how do we think about estimating the problem before jumping into the solution i want to explain you something listen very carefully suppose india has a maximum duration of flight that is of 3 hours and here in this example we are only thinking about the flight that is of 3 hours i am repeating that here we are only thinking about the flight that is of 3 hours so at this point of time 10 am all the flights that have taken off after 7 am will be in air right all the flight which have taken off after 7 am will be in air at 10 am because these are all these flights are of 3 hours journey so they will land after 10 am so all these flights will be in air at 10 am you have to understand this concept suppose if we were to thinking about only one hour flight in that case all the flight that have taken off after 9 am will be in air at 10 am because the flight that have taken off at 7 am will be landing somewhere around 8 am right so this is the concept of this problem so if we have to simplify this problem we can assume that all the flights in india are of average length of 2 hours this is an assumption because some of the flights will be of 1 hour some will be of 3 hours but to simplify things we can assume that on an average the domestic flights in india are of the 2 hour length so the number of airplanes at any point in time equal to the number of airplanes that have taken off at some point in time in the past and have not landed yet this will be the main equation of this problem so let's start with the high level equation and walk through of the solution there are around 90 operational airports in india out of these let's assume that 10 are mega airport which have around 3 runway or 3 air strips on average 30 of them are mid size airport on an average they have around 2 runways and 50 of them are mini airport they have around 1 runway on mega airports at busy hour we can assume that on average every 5 minutes a plane takes off or lands so roughly every 5 minutes a flight takes off or lands at a mega airport so how many flights will take off or land in 1 hour that will be 10 multiplied by 60 divided by 5 multiplied by 3 so let me explain this equation there are there are around 10 airports 60 divided by because every 5 minutes a flight will land or take off so in an hour it will be around 60 divided by 5 and since there are three runways so multiply by 3 this will give around 360 flights that take off or land in an hour on a mega airport similarly on mid size airport and mini airport we can do the similar kind of calculation so now we have to calculate it in 2 hours because we have taken an assumption that every flight in india is of roughly of average length of 2 hours right so in 2 hours we would be having close to 1280 flights that have take off and lands in 2 hours at a peak time now we have to divide it by 2 why because we have to calculate the flight that have take off not land so we are assuming that number of flight that that has been taken off or land are roughly the same so we are dividing it by 2 this will give around 640 flight in air at the peak time it will also be the maximum number of flight that will be in air over india because we are here calculating at the peak time i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section below we'll try to answer your queries also please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us for any mock interview till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel i am here with another guesstimate interview question and this question is quite popular among job recruiters in this question i have explained a very important concept of bottleneck so do watch the video till the very end and you will learn a lot so on this channel we have a complete playlist of guesstimate videos so you can watch and prepare for your upcoming interviews with that said let's get started So today's question is to estimate the revenue of Dom Domino's outlet. I hope you all have visited Domino's at least once but nowadays some of us are majorly ordering it online. This is also a standard question and the difficulty level of this question is easy to moderate. I hope you all will be able to solve this question on your own. So pause the video, give it a try and always try to reach at the final answer. With that said, let's get started. As usual, I am giving you 5 second to think about the question and have some initial approach ready. Your time starts now. I hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question so let's see how we can go about this first let's start with the clarifying question the first question which we can ask is about the revenue source what are the different sources of revenue being attributed here because nowadays people can order it online or can go to the outlet and have it there 
So are we considering only the online orders or offline orders? So let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint. Both offline and online order are being considered here. The second question which we can ask is about the type of revenue. Are we considering revenue only from pizzas or revenue from other sites are also considered here? Let's assume that for the sake of the simplicity and explanation of the bottleneck concept, we are only thinking about the revenue from pizza. It is very simple to extend the concept to get the total revenue. Take that as a homework question and paste the approach in the comment section. So here we are only thinking about the revenue from the pizza. The third question which we can ask is about the locality of the outlet. Where is this outlet located? It is important question because the busy outlet will sell more pizzas than the non busier outlet. So let's assume that the outlet is located in the metro city in a busier area. In the fourth question, we can dig slightly deeper into the outlet configuration as in how big is that outlet? What are the operational hours? Let's assume that the outlet is reasonably big and can accommodate around 100 customers and its operational hours is from 12 noon to 12 midnight. That is a total of 12 hours of operation. The fifth question which we can ask is about the time frame from the standpoint of revenue. Let's assume that we are thinking about the single day revenue and that too on weekends. Let's assume that it to be a Sunday. I think we have asked a considerable set of questions to understand the problem in a better way. If you think we could have asked more questions, please let me know in the comment section so that we all can learn and apply the same in the upcoming interviews. Now time to form a goal of the problem. So the goal of the problem is to estimate the daily revenue of Domino's from pizza in a busy locality in a metro city. Now let's start with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. But before that, let me explain a concept of the bottleneck. Lot of people have commented below to solve the problem from supply side. So I have tried to solve this problem from the supply side constraint. So let's take an order of pizza. It can be bifurcated into these steps, taking order, preparation time, baking time, and finally packaging. And we have to understand Domino's cannot bake infinite number of pizza, even if they have infinite number of people. Let's understand this why. There's a bottleneck of baking time. If you have 100 orders to fulfill, you can do a parallel work in preparing the dough, applying topping, but the baking is the time which will be always be required. So what would be the bottleneck? The number of ovens would be the bottleneck. And a domino store cannot have infinite number of ovens. So even if the demands are super high, seemingly infinite, but we are bounded by the number of pizzas which we can bake in an oven, right? If you want to learn a lot of such concept, download our guesstimate ebook. This guesstimate ebook has a guesstimate question from different industry like healthcare industry, FMCG industry, travel industry. So after this, you would be able to solve any problem in an interview. So download it from the pinned comment and from the description box below. So let's start with the high level approach. Since we know the outlet at 12 hours of operation, we will first divide into peak hours of operation and the non-peak hours of operation. Now we have to take care of the utilization of the oven, which we have discussed just now. In the peak time, utilization of all the oven would be around 100%. But in the case of non-peak hours, the utilization would be less than 100%. So the number of pizzas would be less. But here, demand can be seemingly infinite because the outlet is situated in the metro city and in the busy area. So we won't be able to fulfill the demand of all the customer. So there is a utilization concept here. From there, we would be able to calculate the pizza sold in the peak hours and in the non-peak hours. Summing up, we will be able to calculate the total number of pizza. From now, we would have the average value of the pizza because there can be multiple type of pizza like small, medium, large. We could have bifurcated into those, but for the sake of the simplicity, I am assuming that the average order value and not bifurcating into different type. After that, we know Domino's always have discount coupon codes, etc. So we have to take into account that as well. After that, we have our daily revenue ready from the Domino's pizza. I hope you understand the approach, high level approach to solve the problem. Now let's start putting those numbers. But before that, don't forget to download the ebook. This will immensely help you to build up acumen to solve the guesstimate problem from different type, right? So now putting those number 12 hours of operation, let's assume that six hours of peak hours and six hours of non-peak hours. Why I have taken 50-50 split because there's offline and online delivery as well. So there may be peak hours from the online, which we haven't even imagined of. So I have taken that into account and where Six hours of peak operation and six hours of non-peak operation. You can also defer that. In peak hour, let's assume that there is 100% utilization of the oven. And in the non-peak hours, there is 50% utilization of the oven. So how to get the number of pizza in the peak hour? That will be six. That is six hours multiplied by 60 by five because we take an average of 15 minutes of baking multiply by two. That will That is 
टू ओवन इन द डोमिनोज आउटलेट मल्टीप्लाई बाय फोर बिकॉज वन ओवन कैन बेक फोर मीडियम साइज वर्क पिज्जा टूगेदर अज्यूमिंग दैट वी कैन ऑल्सो बेक सम टू थ्री गार्लिक ब्रेड हियर एंड देयर एंड अदर साइड टूगेदर दैट विल गिव यू हंड्रेड एंड नाइनटी टू मीडियम वर्थ पिज्जा इन पी कार्स दैट विल गिव यू हंड्रेड एंड नाइनटी टू मीडियम साइज वर्थ पिज्जा इन पी कार here also i am assuming that the baking time will remain same for the small sizes pizza medium sizes or big sizes now for the non pi car we would have 50% of utilization and the, from the same concept we would get around 96 medium worth pizzas in the non pi cars so total number of pizza that is sold per day by a domino outlet would be around 288 you can assume to be 300 around 300 also now as discussed earlier we could have bifurcated into three different types but i am not doing that you can consider to get a sharper estimation so here i am assuming that an average medium size pizza so the price of average medium size pizza would be around 350 if you are adding more toppings or if you are having a standard margarita the price will be less if you are having more supreme kind of pizza with extra topping the it can go up to 600 but here i am taking around 350 the average value of a medium size worth pizza the price would be around 350 also dominos run discount on a more frequent basis so let's assume that average discount would be around 20% from there we would be able to get the total revenue of domino store from the pizza i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section and also please download our guesstimate ebook from the link in the description box or from the pinned comment till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel this video is part of our guesstimate series if you haven't checked out other questions please check it out also if you want me to cover some particular questions please comment below and i'll try to prioritize the question in the future videos although i have gotten a good list of questions in the comment section to which i will be creating videos very soon with that said let's get started today's question is to estimate the number of refrigerators sold in india right I think this is a very standard question and asked in several interviews. If you are able to solve this question then you will be able to solve the similar questions like sale of washing machine, sale of television etc. So here I have also talked about the concept of resale. So it will be very good learning experience for you. As usual, I am giving you 5 second to think about the question and have some initial approach ready. So whenever you are watching these videos, don't jump on to the solution. Always pause the video and try to solve the question on your own. and then watch the solution also watch the video till the very end because sometime i only do the voice over and the thing which i am talking about will not be presenting in the ppt so watch the video till the very end to get the better learning experience now think about the question in that 5 second i hope you have an approach ready to tackle this question so let's see how we can go about this first let's start with the clarifying question The very first question which we can ask is about the refrigerator itself. Are we considering a commercial refrigerator or domestic refrigerator? Let's assume that we are only thinking about the domestic refrigerator. So here we are excluding refrigerators in hotels, shops, hospitals and we are only thinking about the refrigerators at home. The second question which we can ask is about the type of domestic refrigerator. For example, there are different type of domestic refrigerators like smart refrigerators, mini refrigerators or the standard one. So what type of the refrigerators are we considering here let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint any type of domestic refrigerators is included in this the third question which we can ask is about the time frame in what time frame are we calculating let's assume that we are going to calculate the sale of refrigerator in one year so basically we need to think about the annual sale of refrigerators the fourth question which we can ask is about the sale of refrigerator are we considering the new refrigerator sale or the resale of the old refrigerator that is a second hand refrigerator also counted as a sale so let's assume that we are only thinking about the new sale of refrigerator so this is very important this will change your answer so watch carefully till the very end i think we have asked almost all the question to comprehend the problem in a better way if you think we could have asked more question please do comment in the comment section it will help all of us to learn more So this is the time to form the goal of the problem. The goal of the problem is to estimate the annual sale of new domestic refrigerator in India in one year. Now let's start with the high level equation and the walk through of the solution. But before that I would like you to comment below your email ID and like this video to get the free guesstimate ebook which contain guesstimate interview questions from different industries. 
So do comment your email ID and like this video. So we need to estimate the annual sale of new refrigerators in India, right? So we will start with the Indian population. We will divide the Indian population into urban population and the rural population. Then we will divide the urban population into urban household. From there, we will be dividing the urban household into upper class, middle class and the lower class. We could have done the same thing for the rural population as well. But here I am assuming that the rural population will not be buying a refrigerator. You can assume some small percentage and calculate. After dividing the urban household into upper class, middle class and lower class, we would be getting the refrigerator required by those households. We will sum it up to get the total number of refrigerator. Here also I am assuming that the lower class urban household won't be buying refrigerator. Now, we got the total number of refrigerator, but one refrigerator lasts for 10 years. So, from here we would be getting the number of refrigerators sold in one year. Now we can take the annual growth rate as well, right? Like every year the demand of refrigerator is kind of increased by X percent, right? From there we have the total number of refrigerators sold in one year, but not all the refrigerators sold will be new, right? People resale their refrigerator as well. So we can assume that X percent of refrigerators are the old one, basically second handed. So 100 minus X would be the new refrigerator sold every year. I hope you got the approach and the concept to solve the problem. Now it is time to put those numbers. The Indian population is around 1.4 billion. Among that 400 million belong to urban population and 1000 million belong to rural population. We can assume that the average household size for urban population would be around 4. This will give you around 100 million urban household. Now we need to bifurcate them into upper, middle, lower class. Here for the sake of simplicity, I have divided into three class. You can also split into upper, upper middle, lower middle and lower class. But I am assuming only three classes here. So let's assume that 20% belong to the upper class. That will give you around 20 million upper class urban household. 50% belong to middle class. That will give you around 50 million middle class urban household. And rest 30% belong to lower class. That will give you around 30 million lower class urban households. Now let's assume that 100% of upper class urban household have a refrigerator. Here I am assuming that each household has one refrigerator. That will give you around 20 million refrigerators. Similarly, assuming that 80% of the middle class urban household have refrigerators, this will give you another 40 million refrigerators. Finally, I am assuming that lower class urban household don't have refrigerators. So this will give you around 60 million refrigerators. Also, on an average, people change their refrigerator in 10 years. So dividing it by 10 will give you around 6 million refrigerator required in a year. Here for the growth perspective, let's assume that 5% is the growth rate of refrigerator every year. This will give you around 6 multiplied by 1.05. That will give you around 6.3 million refrigerator required in a year. But people also buy secondhand refrigerator as well. So that is not a new refrigerator. So let's assume that 10% of the refrigerator are the second-handed. That means 90% of the refrigerator are the new sale. That will give you around 5.67 million new refrigerators that are sold in one year. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment section. I will try to solve your queries. Also, please like the video and comment below to get the free guesstimate ebook. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. If you comment down your email ID and like this video, I will share the free guesstimate ebook having questions from different industries. So comment quickly. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video is part of our guesstimate series. If you haven't checked out other questions, please check it out. Also, this question I picked from the comment section. You can also comment down the questions which you want me to cover in the next video. So let's get started. Today's question is to estimate the number of iPhones sold. So I am giving you 5 seconds so that you can think about the question and have some initial approach ready. I hope you already have an approach ready to tackle this question. So let's see how we can go about this. First, let's start with the clarifying question. The very first question which we can ask is about the geography. Which geography are we considering here? Basically, are we thinking about the sale of iPhone globally or any specific country? Let's assume that we are considering India. That means we are thinking about the iPhone sales in India. The second question which we can ask is about the time frame. In what time frame are we thinking about the sale of iPhone? Is it daily sale, monthly sale or annual sale? Let's assume that we are thinking about the yearly sale of iPhone. The third question which we can ask is about the type of iPhone. If we are considering a specific type of iPhone like latest iPhone or a later version can also work here. Let's assume that we are not bounded by any such constraint. We are thinking about all type of iPhone. 
I think this is it. If you think we could have asked other clarifying question as well, please do comment in the comment section, which will help other people to learn from this. So comment below. So now it is time to form the goal of the problem. The goal of the problem is to estimate the yearly sale of iPhone in India, right? So now let's get started with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. So we need to estimate the number of iPhones sold in India in one year. Let's start with the Indian population. Then we will go ahead dividing the Indian population into urban population and rural population. We will assume that the rural population will not be buying an iPhone and will focus on the urban population. After that, we need to further drill down the urban population. We will be assuming that the people who are greater than 50 and less than 60 would be having a potential access to mobile phones. So we will take out a fraction of urban people who are between in the age 15 and 60. These are people who will have potential access to mobile phones. But to get the iPhone sale, we need to further bifurcate them into upper class, upper middle class, lower middle class and lower class. Then we will be assuming that the people in the lower class and lower middle class will not be buying an iPhone. And a fraction of upper and upper middle class will be buying an iPhone as there are a lot of other competitors as well like Samsung and OnePlus. Once we take out the fraction of upper and the upper middle class who would be buying an iPhone, we would sum it up and get the total number of iPhones. But here there is a catch. We also need to consider the lifetime value of the iPhone. Or let's assume that people change their phones in 3 years. So we need to divide it by 3 to get the yearly sale of iPhone in India. Right? I hope you are very clear with this approach. Let's start putting those numbers. Indian population is around 1.4 billion. Let's assume that 30% of the population belong to urban areas and 70% of the population belong to rural areas. So this will give you around 400 million people in urban areas and 1000 million people in the rural areas. Before proceeding ahead, I am reminding you to comment your email ID and like this video if you want to get the access to that email. Containing a lot of estimates from different industries. So comment below. Back to the question. As we got urban population and rural population, we will focus on the urban population because we are assuming that people in the rural area won't be buying an iPhone. So how to calculate the people between age 15 to 60? For that, let's assume that people in general live between 0 to 80 age and they are uniformly distributed between this. That means the number of people between age 10 to 20 would be same as the number of people between 20 to 30 because we assume that they are uniformly distributed. So the number of urban people between 15 to 60 would be 60 minus 15 that is 45 divided by 80 and multiplied by 400 million. That will give you around 225 million urban people between age of 15 to 60. Now we need to bifurcate them into upper class, upper middle class, lower middle class and lower class. Let's assume that 10% of the people belong to upper class. That will give you around 22.5 million people but I am rounding this off to 23 million people. Similarly, let's assume that 20% of the people belong to upper middle class that will give you around 45 million people. 30% belong to lower middle class that will give you around 67 million people. And this 40% belong to lower class that will give you around 90 million people in lower class. But not all the 23 million people that belong to upper class will buy an iPhone, right? Because there are other players as well like Samsung, OnePlus. So let's assume that 40% of the people from the upper class in urban areas will buy an iPhone. That will give you around 9.1 million people buying iPhone in upper class in urban areas. Similarly, let's assume that 20% of the upper middle class will buy an iPhone. That will give you around 9 million. And the rest, lower middle class and the lower class won't be buying an iPhone. So adding both will give you around 18.2 million iPhones in India. So here we need to divide it by 3 because let's assume that the average lifetime of an iPhone would be 3 years. So we will be left with 18 divided by 3 that will give you around 6 million iPhone that are being sold in India every year. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please comment below and I will try to answer your queries. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video is part of our guesstimate series. If you haven't checked out other questions, please check it out. Also, you can ask question you want me to cover next. So with that said, let's get started. Today's question is to estimate the number of people at the airport. I am giving you 5 seconds so that you can think about the question and have some initial approach ready. I hope you already have an approach ready to tackle this question. So let's see how we can go about this. First, let's start with the clarifying question. The very first question which we can ask is about the airport. 
which airport are we considering here because the number of passenger at airport in metro cities would be very different from the airport in the tier 2 or tier 1 city right so it is important to clarify about the airport let's assume that the airport for which we are going to calculate is bangalore airport the second question which we can ask is about the people are we considering all the staff workers at the airport or are we considering about the passengers only right because you must have seen at the airport there are a lot of airline workers staff worker airport maintenance staff security staff vendors so there are a lot of other people at the airport as well so let's assume that in this question we are only thinking about the passengers the third question which we can ask is about the time frame so when we are saying that we are estimating the number of people at the airport what time frame are we considering is it a day or a month or a year because the number of people would be different in all the three scenarios so let's assume that we are going to calculate in a day i think we have clarified most of the question now it is time to form a goal of the problem so the goal of the problem is to estimate the number of passenger at bangalore airport in a day now let's start with the high level equation and the walk through of the solution all right we need to calculate the number of passenger at bangalore airport in a day we'll start with the number of flight that take off and land at the bangalore airport in a day because we need to take into account the number of people who are going from bangalore to other place and the number of people who are coming from other places to bangalore right so we have to take both into account once we have the number of the flights that take off and the land from the bangalore airport sum it up and we would get the total number of flights that take off and the land from the bangalore airport now since the flight can be of different size if you have seen the international flight are in general bigger flights and their sitting capacity is also high in comparison to domestic flight to give you a perspective see this image this plane is airbus a380 which has higher sitting capacity and they are used for international flights on the other side see the plane like airbus a320 or boeing 777 these are comparatively smaller airplanes and their sitting capacity is also low these are in general used for domestic flight so i think you have a fair idea about this different size of the airplanes so we need to bifurcate the total number of flights into big size plane and the small size plane from there we would be able to calculate the maximum number of people who can travel consider 100% occupancy but not all the flights are 100% occupant right so we need to take the average occupancy of the flight right and after that we have our answer ready that is the total number of passengers at bangalore airport in a day i hope you are clear with this approach now let's start putting those numbers total number of flight that take off and land from the bangalore airport we have already created a video on this i will put the video on the i button at the top also i'll put the video in the description box it is highly recommended that you watch that video first and then resume this from that video we estimate the total number of flight that take off and land from the bangalore airport is around 480 and for the ease of simplicity we can assume that the number of flight that take off and lands are same so 480 was the number that came from that video 480 flight take off and 480 flight land at bangalore airport so the total number of flight at bangalore airport would be around 960 right so let's assume that 5% of the flights are big flight that will come around 48 flights are the big size flight whose capacity is around 400 people and rest 95% of the flight are the average size flight which are which will be around 912 flight average seating occupancy would be around 180 people right from there we can calculate the total number of passenger at the 100% occupancy that would be around 183000 right so we what we did is like just did 48 multiplied by 400 plus 912 multiplied by 180 you will get this number but ideally on an average we can assume that 80% of the occupancy in the flight this number can vary in peak season as well in peak season this can go to 95 or 98% but on an average we are assuming 80% occupancy so multiplying 183000 by 0.8 you will get so you will get the number around 146000 so the total number of passenger at bangalore airport in a day would be in order of magnitude of 145000 or 46000 i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please comment below and i will try to answer your queries till then keep learning and keep watching hi everyone welcome back to our channel i am here with you with another important guesstimate interview question and the question is to estimate the number of atm 
Yes, this question has been asked in various placement interviews in MBA colleges and B.Tech colleges. So pay a close attention to this question. With that said, let's get started. So just think about this question for 5 seconds and tell me what are the initial thoughts that are popping up in your head. I am pretty sure that you must have figured out at least the clarifying question which we are going to ask to the interviewer. So let's start with the clarifying question first. The very first question which we can ask is about the geography because we are asked to calculate the number of ATMs but there is no mention of which place which city are we going to calculate right so why i am asking this question is because the number of ATMs in Bangalore will be order of magnitude different from the number of ATMs in India that is why it is important to clarify the geography let's assume that we are asked to calculate ATMs all over India then comes the second question are we consider ATMs of a particular type of bank or we are not bounded by any such constraint? Let's assume that we are going to calculate all ATMs across all the banks in India, right? So this is our problem statement. So let's summarize and create a goal of the problem. So the goal of the problem is to estimate all kinds of ATMs in India, right? Now let's start with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. Since we have to calculate the number of ATMs all over India, let's start with the Indian population. We will divide the Indian population into urban population and rural population because the number of card holders would be very different in urban and the rural areas. From urban population and rural population, we can get the urban household and the rural household. Now not every household has access to ATM card, right? So we have to take a fraction of those households. The fraction would be different in urban and the rural areas. So from the urban and the rural household, we will get the urban card households and rural card households. Those are basically households which have access to ATM card. So urban ATM households is nothing but number of household who has access to ATM card. So till now you are with me, right? So till now we have urban and the rural ATM household, but there is one thing which we need to consider. So in some household, two people may have access to ATM card. And in some household, all the family member have access to this card. But for the sake of the simplicity, I have divided the urban ATM household and rural ATM household into two groups. So one group is the household where two users have access to ATM card. Another group is the household where only one user have access to ATM card. Similarly, it will be in the rural ATM household as well. From this, we would be able to calculate urban ATM users and rural ATM users. From there, we can get the total ATM users. Once we have total ATM users in India, we can have some approximation as in ATMs are placed in such a way that it can serve around 500 people in the proximity. So from there, we would be able to get the total number of ATMs in I hope you are clear with the approach. If you have any doubt, let's put that in the comment section. I'll try to answer your queries. Also, if you are preparing for some upcoming interviews, be it product management interview, guesstimate interview, consulting interview, MBA and admission interview, you can book a slot with us on top mate. I'll put the link in the description box. Now let's start putting those numbers. Indian population is around 1.4 billion, out of which 30% belong to urban population and 70% belong to rural population. This will give you 400 million people in urban areas and around 1000 million people in rural areas. After that, let's assume that average household size in the urban areas is 4. That will give you around 100 million urban households. Similarly, let's assume that the average household size in rural area to be 5. That will give you around 200 million rural households in India. So till now, we have identified the approximate number of urban and the rural household in India. Now let's assume that 60% of urban households have access to ATM card and only 20% of rural households have access to ATM card. So this will give you around 60 million urban households who have access to ATM cards and 40 million rural households who have access to ATM cards. Now let's focus on those 60 million urban households who have access to ATM card. Let's assume that 50% of those households have two ATM card users and rest 50% of households have one ATM card user, right? Be very clear with this concept. Similarly, in the rural side, out of all households that have access to ATM card, only 10% of the household have two ATM card users and rest 90% of the ATM household have one ATM card user. So now we have to get the total number of urban ATM users that will be around 30 multiplied by 2 plus 30 multiplied by 1 because 30 million households have two ATM card users and rest 30 million households has one ATM card user. So total number of ATM card users in urban areas is around 90 million. Similarly, we can do the same calculation for rural ATM users. So that will be 4 multiplied by 2 plus 36 multiplied by 1. Because 4 million ATM household who have, who have 2 ATM card users and 36 million household who have 1 ATM card users. 
adding this we will get 44 million rural atm users now we have to get the total atm users so we just sum it up we will get the 134 million total atm users in india now we have got the total number of atm users how to get the total number of atm now assume that one atm is dedicated to 500 atm card users in india will who are living in this proximity so the average number of atm required to serve all the 134 million atm users that will be around 134 million divided by 500 that means close to 276000 total atms are now in india i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt in any of these steps i will try to resolve your queries in the comment section till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Here I am with another important guesstimate question and the question is to estimate the number of flights that take off from an airport. Yes, the number of flights that take off from an airport. I am giving you 5 seconds so that you can think about the question and have some initial approach ready. Right? So it will help you to build your acumen to solve guesstimate questions. I hope you have thought something about this question. Let's dig deep into this. As usual, we will go with our first step to ask clarifying question. The first question which we can ask is about the kind of planes we are thinking about. So basically, planes can be of different types, right? It can be cargo planes, defense airplanes or passenger planes. So what kind of airplanes should we consider here? Let's assume that we are thinking about passenger airplanes. The second question which we can ask is about the airport. What kind of airport we are thinking about here? Is this airport in tier 1 city or tier 2 city? Why am I asking this question? It is very important you to know beforehand why you are asking this question. So why I ask this question is because busy airports are always operational. But some airports which are not very traffic heavy will have non-operational hours also. Let's assume that we are thinking about Bangalore International Airport and we all know that Bangalore Airport is kind of a traffic heavy airport. The third question which we can ask is about the time frame. Are we calculating the number of flights that take off in a year or a month or in a day? Let's assume that the interviewer want us to calculate the number of flights that take off in a day. Finally, the fourth question which we can ask is about the domestic or international flights. Are we focusing on domestic flights or international flights are also included in this question? Let's assume that all kind of passenger flights are included in this, be it domestic flights or international flights, right? Since we have clarified all the questions and a fair idea of what is being asked in the interview question, it is time to form the goal of the problem so that you and your interviewer are on the same page and you have summarized whatever you have been asked in the clarifying question. So the goal of the problem is to estimate the number of passenger flights that take off from the Bangalore airport in a day. So how do you think you would go about solving this problem? There can be multiple ways to solve the same problem. Let's start with the high level equation and the walkthrough of the solution. Since we want to calculate the number of flights that take off in a day, let's start with the 24 hours in a day and bifurcate them into peak operational hours and non-peak operational hours. Previously in the clarifying question, we have assumed that airport to be Bangalore airport. So it is a busy airport. Hence, we don't have to consider non-operational hours. But if you think about the small airport like Jaipur airport, we may have to consider non-operational hours as well, where no flights take off. Right. So this is the key point here. After taking account the peak and the non-peak hour, we will consider runway throughput rate. What I mean by runway throughput rate? Runway throughput rate is basically how many airplanes take off on one runway in one hour. So if you see in a peak hour, the planes are lined up, right? They are lined up as soon as one plane takes off. Another plane is also started taking off. So this is how the flights take off. So runway throughput rate would be determined by the time in between two flights that take off, right? From there, we will be having the flights that take off and land during peak hours and non-peak hours because the number of runways are limited. Same runway will be used for takeoff and for land both. So from here, we will be getting a number of flights that take off and land both in peak and non-peak hours. After this, we can assume that number of flights that take off and land are in an equal proportion. So we can calculate the number of flights that take off by just dividing it by two or like making the number half. Let's start putting those numbers to get the final estimate. There are 24 hours in a day. Assuming that 8 hours are peak operational hours and 16 hours the non-peak operational hours. Assuming in peak hour, in every 3 minutes a flight takes off or lands. That will give you around 20 flights per hour. So here we assume that the time interval 
between two flight taken off or land is around 3 minutes so in 60 minutes 20 flights will take off or land similarly in non peak hour every 6 minute a flights take off or land that will give around 10 flights per hour there are three runways in bangalore airport so total number of flights that take off or land in peak operational are around 8 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 3 so this will give around 480 flights in peak operational hour and in non peak operational hour the total number of flights that take off or land will be around 16 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 3 that will give you around 480 another 480 flights in a non peak operational hour but we need to calculate flights that take off that that would be 980 divided by 2 because we have assumed that number of flights that take off or land would be equal this will give around 480 flights that take off from an bangalore airport in a day i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section we'll try to answer your queries here we have taken a lot of assumptions as well please do take care of this till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel in this video we will be solving a guesstimate question which is asked in many interviews like product manager interview or consulting interview right so it is very important to master guesstimate questions so let's get started today's question is to estimate the number of uber rides i am pretty sure that you must be having something in your mind as soon as you see this question but before that i want to tell you about our topmate page where you can book a slot with us for any mock interview resume review or career guidance we have got around 4.9 rating from 50 plus users and also got featured in the top 1% of the tutors on topmate so do check it out i'll put the link in the description box now back to the question so what you will do now is to think about the problem and if you think the problem is bit unclear and ambiguous then ask clarifying question to reach the proper goal of the problem right so i hope you get it so let's start the thinking process I am giving you 5 seconds to think about it. I hope you have something in your mind. So in this question, it is bit unclear about where we want to calculate the number of Uber rides, right? Which city, which country, where do we want to calculate? So the first clarifying question we will ask is about the geography. Let's assume that we are thinking about the Uber rides in Bangalore city. So so the second thing which is unclear is about the time frame so the number of uber rides which we are trying to estimate is at daily level monthly level or annual level so this is also bit unclear so let's assume that we are thinking about the total number of uber rides in bangalore in a month finally one more thing which is which we can clarify is about the category in uber you can see that we have different type of category like uber auto uber cabs and there are other categories as well so is there any particular category which we are targeting or we are targeting total number of rides across all the categories let's assume that we are thinking about all the categories that are available on the uber now is the time to comprehend whatever we have discussed till now and form a goal of the problem so here the goal of the problem is to calculate the number of uber rides in bangalore in a month across all their category So in the real interview also you have to comprehend the goal like this it will indicate that you have a good communication skill and you are making things simpler for the interviewer but yes before that you have to prepare your resume as well and i have completely formatted an editable resume which you can download from the description box now we have comprehended and set the goal of the problem let's see high level equation and walk through of the solution we will start with the population of bangalore and from there we will divide the population into three categories one is less than 15 year old second is between 15 to 55 the third one is above 55 till 80 years old assuming that the age lie between 0 to 80 years why i have bifurcated into three categories because i will assume that people less than 15 or more than 55 will not use uber or hardly use uber so we can neglect that after that people who are between 15 to 55 we will think about the potential users who use ride hailing services like uber ola or rapido some other services like blue smart as well from there we will try to estimate the uber ride assuming some market share of the uber because in india there are various players are in the ride hailing services from these uber users we will try to bifurcate them into power user medium user or low usage user then from there we will be calculating the total number of rides i hope you are clear with this approach let's start putting those numbers bangalore population is around 10 million then we have to get the estimate of the number of people between different age groups which we have mentioned right so here i will make a simple assumption that people are uniformly distributed between age groups so here between 0 to 80 years of age people are uniformly distributed so between 0 to 15 total number of people will be 15 by 80 multiplied by 10 million that will come around 18.75 lakhs people i hope you are very clear with this calculation similarly between 15 to 55 that is around 50% of the people will be there that is around 50 lakhs and remaining will be between the 55 to 80 that is around 31.25 lakhs 
so we have 50 lakhs potential users who can use cab services but out of those let's assume that only 10% of the users are using cab services because others are using other transport public transport or they have their own vehicle so only 10% of the 50 lakh users are using ride hailing services like uber ola rapido and all so these are 5 lakh people are our users of ride hailing services now not all the users will use uber right so we will assume that 40% of the users are using uber and other 60% are using other competitors like ola rapido and other players right so this is the concept of the market share now out of those 2 lakh people we can assume that 20% are the power users who take around 30 rides per month 40% are medium users who take around 10 rides per month and rest low usage users are around 40% which take one ride per month so that will give around 1.2 lakh rides by power user 8 lakh ride by medium users and 80000 rides by rare users adding all this that will give around 20 lakh rides per month in bangalore that is around 2 million uber rides per month in bangalore across all the categories i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section below we'll try to answer your queries also please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us on topmate for any mock interview till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel in this video we will be solving a guesstimate question which is usually asked in many interviews be it product management interview or consulting interview so let's get started today's question is to estimate the number of shampoo bottles sold in india okay so what will you do now you will pause the video and think through it don't jump on the solution first think and then continue with the video also please check other playlist and the videos from the i button at the top i have created videos on business strategy machine learning resume tips and tricks You can also book a slot with us on Topmate. If you want to get your resume reviewed or you want to have some mock interview, you can book a slot with us. I have put the link in the description box, so do check it out. Back to the question. As usual, the first step is to understand the question and ask as many clarifying question as you can. So here, if you think about this question, we are asked to estimate the number of shampoo bottles sold in India, right? So what are the things that should come into your mind? Think, think harder. The first thing I would like to clarify with the interviewer is. is he asking explicitly about the shampoo or he is also considering conditioner or body wash as well so let's assume that we are explicitly talking about the shampoo here then the second question i would like to clarify with the interviewer is about the size of the bottle because there are different type of the bottle in terms of size so let's assume that we are talking about the medium sized bottle something around 200 or 250 ml the third question i would like to clarify is about time frame in what time frame are we calculating do we wanted to calculate it monthly or annually let's assume that we wanted to calculate it annually so finally the last question about the end customers are we also calculating shampoo bottles sold to hotels stays etc or are we thinking about the end consumer household let's assume that here we are thinking about the end customer household means directly b to c said we are not thinking about the business to business like hotels since we have clarified the question it is time to comprehend and set a goal of the problem So the goal of the problem is to calculate the annual sale of the medium size shampoo bottle which are sold directly to customer in India right so now let's start with the high level equation and walk through of the solution we will start with the indian population and then we'll divide into urban population and rural population from there we will be calculating the urban household and rural household then from each urban and the rural household we will be finding out household which use shampoo right then we will be calculating household which use shampoo bottle why it is important because some household use big bottles and some still use sachets from there we will be calculating the annual number of medium size shampoo bottles sold in india i think the approach is straight forward let's start putting those numbers the indian population is around 1.4 billion out of those 30% belong to urban areas that gives us around 400 million urban population 70% belong to rural areas that gives around 1000 million rural population now assuming four people in the urban household that will give us around 100 million urban household and same assuming five people in the rural household that will give around 200 million rural household now let's assume 80% of the urban household use shampoo that will give around 80 million shampoo household from urban population and assuming only 20% of the rural household use shampoo that gives around 40 million shampoo household from the rural population now let's assume that 70% of the urban household use medium size shampoo, shampoo bottle rest 30% either use big size bottle or they they use sachets so that gives around 56 million 
shampoo bottle household from urban population similarly assuming only 10% of the shampoo household from the rural population use bottle and the rest other majorly use sachets this gives around 4 million household now adding both we are having around 60 million medium sized shampoo bottles household in india now we can fairly assume that around 4 million bottle get consumed in india so this will give around 240 million medium sized shampoo bottle get sold in india i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section below we'll try to answer your query please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us for any mock interview till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel in this video we will be solving a guesstimate question which is usually asked in many interviews be it product management interview or consulting interview so let's get started today's question is to estimate the google ad revenue all right but before that i request you to pause the video and think through it also please check other playlist in the videos from the i button at the top i have created so many videos on business strategy machine learning resume tips and tricks so back to the question As usual the first step is to understand the question and ask any clarifying question to the interviewer. So here if we think about this question we are asked to estimate the Google ad revenue right so what are the things that should come into your mind think for a while since Google ad revenue comes from ad on different platform so the first question we should ask is are we considering overall ad revenue including YouTube or we are focusing on Google search ad revenue or something else So we can here we can assume that we are focusing on Google search advertisement revenue. The second question which should come to our mind is in what time frame are we calculating this ad revenue? Suppose here we are talking about annual ad revenue. The third question we can ask the interviewer is that in what geography he want us to focus on? Because Google is global company, so is there any particular geography he want us to focus on while calculating the ad revenue? Here let's assume that the interviewer wants us to focus on the Indian geography. So what is the goal of the problem? The goal of the problem is to calculate the annual ad revenue from Google search in India, right? So let's start with high level equation and walk through of the solution. We'll start with the Indian active internet user. These are the users who have active internet connection. Currently India has 600 million active internet users. Even though we have active internet user but not everyone uses search engine, right? I understand that Google is quite popular but still not everyone uses search engine. Also some people use different search engine like Bing or Yahoo. So we have to take the fraction of those users who use Google. So we have to take the market share. After that, we can divide these users into power user, medium user, low usage users. From there, we can calculate the total searches by these users. After getting the total number of searches, we need to take the fraction of those searches that results in the ad. So there, we will get the total ads. Once ad is shown, we need to take into account how many people are actually clicking on this ad. That is click through rate. because not everyone clicks on the ad right so we have to take into account the click through rate as well after that we have to think about the cost per click so what does it mean by cost per click after clicking on the particular ad how much the advertiser is paying till here we have the total ad revenue but this is not the google ad revenue because google take a fraction of it for example when you open some website and click on the ad google gives some fraction of the revenue to the owner of the website and take rest of it so we have to take the fraction of the total ad revenue then we have to just multiply by 365 to get the annual ad revenue of the google so this is the overall high level of equation and walk through of the solution now that we have discussed the complete approach it is time to fill those numbers we already discussed that india has 600 million active internet users and we can assume that out of those active users only 2/3 use google and rest 1/3 either don't use search engine or they use other competitor like ping or yahoo so we are thinking about 400 million users who uses google so let's assume that the 20% of these users are the power users who are doing 10 searches per day and 60% of the users are medium users who are doing 2 searches per day and 20% and rest 20% of the users are doing 0.1 searches per day by this what i mean that they are doing one search in 10 days so we are taking 0.1 searches per day so if we talk about the power user they are doing total 800 million searches per day if you are if you are thinking about medium user they are they are doing 480 million searches per day and low users are doing around 8 million searches per day so the total number of searches would be around 1.3 billion so in india around 1.3 billion google searches are happening 
Now let's assume 25% of the Google search result in ad. That means there are 350 million impression of the Google ad by a search. What does it mean by impression? Impression means people are seeing 350 million ads from the Google search in a day. Now we have the click through rate, but only 10% of the ads are getting clicked. That means 35 million ads are clicked every day. So this 10% is known as the CTR click through rate. Now let's talk about the cost per click. For every clicks, let's assume that ad advertisers is paying around 0.1 dollar. So that gives us around 3.5 million dollar per day. But not all will go to the Google ad revenue because Google has to pay the website owner as well. So assume that it takes around 60% of it, that is around 2 million per day, roughly around 2 million per day. Or if we talk about in the yearly, that will be around 750 million dollar per year. So total ad revenue from the Google search is around 750 million dollar per year. So now what you have to do is you have to do the sanity checking of this number. Uh, please comment in the comment section box about how will you do the sanity checking of sanity check for this number. I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment section below. We'll try to answer any query. Please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us on TopMed for any mock interview. Till then, keep learning and keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will be solving a guesstimate question which is usually asked in many interviews, be it a product management interview or consulting interview. So let's get started. Today's question is to estimate the active Gmail users in India, right? But before that, I request you to pause the video and think through it. Also, please check other playlists and other videos from the i button on the top. As usual, the first step is to understand the question and ask any clarifying question to the interviewer. If you think about this question, we are asked to estimate the number of Gmail users in India. So what is the first thing that should come to your mind? Think for a minute. So the first thing that should come to your mind is, does this include Gmail user including corporate user or user who are using it for personal use cases? Because many companies use Google Suite and hence Gmail account. But here we are thinking about the personal Gmail account. The second question which should be asked is, what does it mean by active users? Why it is important to us? Because many people create their Gmail ID and don't use it for years or months. So we have to clarify. Here we can assume that the interviewer means Gmail active users are the one who send at least one email in the month. So basically monthly active users is what we are referring to. Final question which we can ask is if you want us to calculate the desktop users or mobile users or both, let us assume that he wants us to calculate both, both type of users. So the goal of the problem is to calculate Gmail active users in India who sends at least one email in a month. So this is how we can approach this problem. So first we can start with Indian population, then we can bifurcate the Indian population into various age groups. After that we can think about the internet penetration and smart device penetration. Here we can ignore the age group which is less than 15 and more than 60 because we can fairly assume that they are either too young or too old to use Gmail. After that we can think about the Gmail market share because there are many other players as well like Yahoo, Hotmail, Outlook. So we need to take market share of the Gmail into account. Once we do that, then we have to think about the fraction of the people who are sending at least one email in a month. After this, we have our answer ready. So this is the approach. Since we have discussed the complete approach, it is time to fill the numbers. Indian population is around 1.4 billion. We can assume that 20% of the population lies between 0 to 15, that is around 280 million. 30% of the population lies between 15 to 40, that is around 420 million. Another 30% of the population lies between 40 to 60, that is also around 420 million. These are just the fair estimates. Always remember that interviewer is more interested in approach rather than these numbers. You can always ask or discuss these numbers with the interviewer, but the most important thing is to get the approach right. Okay, so moving forward, rest 20% of the population lies between 60 to 80, that is around 280 million. As we discussed earlier, we will ignore the people less than 15 and more than 16. Now we will assume that the people between 50 to 40, around 50% of the people have access to the internet and smart devices. Because in India, people in rural areas still don't have access to the internet. Similarly, we will assume that only 30% of the people between 40 to 60 have access to the internet and smart devices. This will give us around 336 million people in total. 
we can assume that 80% of the people use gmail and rest 20% of the people use other services like hotmail and yahoo this will give us around 268 million users who have personal gmail account but not all of them are active please note that 268 million are the gmail account but not all of them are active we can assume that only 60% of the people are active that means only 60% of the people send at least one email in a month that gives us around 160 gmail monthly active users in india i hope you have learned something new from this video if you have any doubt please do comment in the comment section below i'll try to answer to your queries please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us for any mock interview till then keep learning and keep watching Hi everyone welcome back to our channel in this video we will be solving a guesstimate question which is usually asked in many product interviews or consulting interviews so let's get started today's question is to estimate the market size of driverless car in 2030 so as usual the first step is to understand the question and ask any clarifying question to the interviewer so here the first question which we clarify is about the market size so basically do we need to calculate the market size in terms of volume or revenue assuming that the interviewer wants us to calculate the market size in terms of volume like number of cars we can always convert it to the revenue by multiplying it with the price the second question is to understand driverless car so is the interviewer considering only cars or he wants us to consider about other automobiles as well so let's assume he want us to calculate about the driverless car The next question which we need to ask is about the B2B or B2C. Basically, should we include the cars which is getting used in business operation, or do we need to calculate the cars which is bought for the personal use? So let's assume he wants us to calculate for the personal use. The other question we should ask is about the automation. What is the level of automation is he expecting from driverless car? Like completely driverless or partial assistance to the driver is also getting counted in the driverless car. So let's assume that. some decent level of assistance given to driver is getting counted as a driverless car so we can assume that these kind of cars would cost around more than 20 lakhs and will come under the premium categories right now the final question which we can ask is about the geography does the interviewer want us to calculate it for a specific geography let's assume that he want us to calculate for the indian geography now let's summarize whatever we have discussed till now It is always better to summarize the goal of the problem once you have clarified all the questions so that you and your interviewer are on the same page. So here the goal is to calculate the market size of driverless car in terms of volume and for the 2030. So this is how we can approach the problem. To estimate the market size of the driverless car, we can start with the Indian population and bifurcate it between the urban population and the rural population. From urban population, we can estimate the size of urban households. and from there we can estimate the high income urban household because we can assume that these kind of cars are afforded by the high income people so here we can estimate the size of the luxury market size from there we can estimate the market size of the luxury car then we can estimate the number of luxury cars produced in a year by dividing it by average lifetime value of the car then we can estimate the market size of the driverless car by taking some estimation of the or some fraction of the luxury car that is produced per year now we have come to the end part where we will assume some annual growth or cagr for this segment and can estimate the market size for the 2030 so this is the overall approach we are taking for count for estimating the market size of the driverless car in 2030 now we have understood the approach it is time to fill those numbers so the indian population is around 1.4 billion out of those we can assume that urban population is around 30% that gives around 420 million people we can assume that on an average an urban household has four people so that this will give us around 100 million households high income household will be around 10% of it that means we are thinking about 10 million households out of those we can assume that only one third have the luxury car that will give the number of luxury car to be around 3.3 million Now we have assumed that average life of the luxury car is around 5 to 6 years. So from there we can see that 5 lakhs luxury cars are sold every year. This driverless car technology is at very nascent stage. So majority of the driverless cars are only giving the partial assistance to the driver. 
so we can assume that out of 5 lakhs luxury cars that are produced annually only 5% belong to the driverless car category that means 25000 cars are driverless cars which are sold every year today remember it is as of today now we have to take the growth rate finally we can expect 20% growth rate in this segment this will give the market size of around 90000 or 1 lakh driverless cars in 2030 per year I hope you have learned something new from this video. If you have any doubt, please do comment in the comment section below. We'll try to answer it if you have any queries to that. Please subscribe to our channel or you can book a slot with us on Topmate for any mock interview. So till then, keep learning and keep watching.